We were talking about the winning Christ and winning crowns in Philippians chapter 3 and uh, verse number 8 at the end of the verse there. It says, that I may win Christ and be found in Him, verse 9, not having mine own righteousness which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith. Amen. And so we saw the tense of the words in verse number uh, 8. And he said there that, um, he said, Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. And so he's speaking as a saved man already united completely in Jesus Christ. Amen. And he's found in him, and it has nothing to do with his salvation. This is his calling uh, afterwards, and this is his race afterwards to win Christ and win crowns. And, um, and so the prize that we looked at was the five crowns, and we covered that and looked at, and looked at that thoroughly and, and went through those. So to obtain these prizes, a man must not merely be saved and in winning Christ, but he must know Christ's experience from his own living. The power of Christ's resurrection is available in this life for the living. Amen. And so when it says there, if you go down just a little bit, in verse number 10, the Bible says that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. This is the Apostle Paul wanting to know Christ further and the power of His resurrection and the fellowship of His sufferings being made conformable unto His death. So he's not referring, the Apostle Paul is not referring to a literal crucifixion uh, for he never received a literal crucifixion like Jesus did. Paul was decapitated. He was, his head was cut off. And um, we, we see that this is a spiritual uh, fellowship of sufferings and he, he be, being made conformable unto his death. So in his death, there was, there was power. Uh, look over, hold your place. This is a spiritual death. Romans chapter 6. Turn over to Romans chapter 6 and verse 5. So when the Apostle Paul is winning Christ and winning crowns, you say, how did he go about that, this higher plane that the Apostle Paul was on? That, by the way, you and I, you and I as Christians, we have access. We can get on this same plane. We can get on this same ground as the Apostle Paul was on. We can win the same crowns. We can, we can uh, ex exhibit the same qualities of life. And to know Christ and the power of His resurrection and live a Spirit-filled uh, life and know this spiritual death. Romans chapter number 6. And you say, what does it mean by that? Well, let's, let's, let's see what it means. We make conformable unto his death. Romans chapter 6 and verse 5. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we also shall be, shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with who? With him. That the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve, what? Sin. When you were lost, you know who you served? You served sin. Sin would tell you what time to get up in the morning. Sin would tell you what time to go to bed at night. Sin would tell you what to do on your smoko. And it was smoking out, outside. It was chugging something down. It was popping pills. It was uh, on the weekend when you got paid, it was blowing all your money and spending all your money on things that were ungodly and wicked. Say why? Because the body wanted it. The sin inside of you wanted it. The friends led you that way. And the world promised this is where pleasure and joy and peace and contentment is found. At the bottom of a bottle. But it wasn't there. And that's what you went after. Sin. And um, the Bible says uh, there in, in verse number that the body of sin, that we should not serve sin at the end of verse 6, verse 7, Romans 6, 7. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Now if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we, all, we shall also live with him, knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto who? You want your example? You're dead with Christ and you're living because of and you're living like the Bible says unto God. Not unto sin, but unto God. Verse 11, likewise, like as Christ, likewise reckon ye also, verse 11, 
yourselves to be what? Dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. You want the victorious Christian life? You want this life of winning Christ and winning crowns? It's a spiritually uh, life. It's a spiritual life where the old man is dead and remains so. Amen? That old man is dead. Amen? In verse 12, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. Your members is your eyes, your ears, your nose, your hands, your fingers. Amen? Your thought life, your brain, your life, your feet, your legs, your members yielding them all dedicated to God's service and God's will in your life. Amen? Yield yourselves. Verse 14, For sin shall not have dominion over ye, you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? God forbid. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death, or of obedience unto righteousness. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Being then made free from sin, ye became the servants of righteousness. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For as ye have yielded your members' servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. Amen. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye, had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? For the end of those things is what? Death. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God... Ye have your fruit unto holiness, and the end everlasting life. Say, what does that mean? I don't know about you, but since you got saved, you know what happens when you get saved and you start living for God? And you start living unto holiness and righteousness? Your life changes. Your life changes. No, it's not free of trouble and anguish and strife and, and things come your way. But to be honest with you, it's not the rule anymore. When you were lost, that was the rule. Now when you're saved, you say, what is it? It's the exception to the rule. Um, you know, when you were lost, that phone would ring in the middle of the night. And you'd think to yourself, who's calling? What seeds have I sown? And you get scared. You didn't want to answer it. But now when you get saved, who's on the other end? I don't know, but... They're not calling for me. Amen? Some of you know what I'm talking about. That phone rings, and you go run and scramble for it. Because you don't want anybody else to answer because you don't know who's on the other side when you're lost. And you get saved, it's not that way anymore. Uh, you say, why? The police may be calling. <laughs> they found your fingerprints somewhere. Yeah. Or the accountant's calling. And the government's wondering why this doesn't add up, and that adds up. You see that? The end of those things is death. But when you sow to righteousness, to holiness, then yes, okay, you might get a phone call, something happens, but it'd probably be a misunderstanding, something that didn't go right, something that you can fix. Amen? You sow those seeds of sin, boy. And has a few years have to pass after you get saved where you don't sweat those bullets when that phone rings or when you get a letter in the mail that you don't know who it's from or that door. Somebody's knocking on that door. Ooh. Amen, amen. Back to Philippians chapter 3. So the Apostle Paul was said, when I was made conformable unto his death, this is the higher ground. The attainment, therefore, of verse 11... Um, that you read there in verse 11, Philipp <coughs> Philippians 3.11, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. And so that's the, that's the better resurrection 
of look over to Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And verse number 35. Hebrews chapter 11. And verse 35. So the, he said, I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead in Philippians 3, verse 11. And you say, what? The, the resurrection that he wants is this better resurrection. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 35. Women received their dead, raised to life again, and others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a what? A better resurrection. Amen. So he wasn't running in vain. He wanted to gain those crowns. He wanted to gain rewards that were eternal, that was going to matter for eternity's sake and for the glory of God. And he wanted that better resurrection. Amen? He wanted that better resurrection. Look at Acts chapter number 4. Acts chapter 4. Acts chapter 4 and look at verse 2. Acts chapter 4, verse 2. The Bible says, Being grieved that they taught the people and preached through Jesus, the what? The resurrection from the dead. They're getting grieved by that. Uh, look at uh, Luke 16, verse 31. Luke 16, verse 31. Luke 16, verse 31. Luke 16, verse 31. And he said unto them, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the what? From the dead. So they have the hope of the resurrection. Talking about this resurrection. The apostle Paul, that I might attain unto that better resurrection. They knew about the resurrection. They talked about the resurrection. I look at Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12. Mark chapter 12, and look at verse number 25. Mark chapter 12, verse 25. Mark 12, and verse 25, it says, For when they shall rise from the what? The dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. The Apostle Paul wanted something after life was over. He was running a race for prizes, for crowns. He was wanting something there. He wanted to win Christ. Knew that there was something after this. I always witness to people and I talk to them and I say, it seems like life would be pretty much a cruel joke to get 70 years down here that you're not even promised. You might just make it to 25. You might make it to 40. You might not even make it that far. And for what? Some kind of cruel cosmic joke? No, there's a purpose. There's a reason that God set it up this way and put this thing together. And you say, why? Because God's got something better. There's a better resurrection. There's a brighter day a coming, amen? And there's a better resurrection coming. There's a better life hereafter. Look at Luke chapter number 20. Luke chapter 20. The Bible says, in hope of eternal life. Luke chapter 20 and verse 35. Luke chapter 20 and verse 35. But they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. So that's coming. That's future. Amen. And that's what the Apostle Paul said. I want to attain to that. I want that better resurrection. And so to obtain this better resurrection, there's some things that are necessary. The, the first thing that we see there in Philippians chapter 3 to obtain this better resurrection is a Christian, very first thing, must count sacramental religion as excrement. The Apostle Paul called it dung. 
your old religion, your old way, spinning the prayer wheels and doing back backflips and barking like a dog if you're charismatic or a Pentecostal and putting your faith in something other than the shed blood of Jesus Christ and all this religious garb and a priesthood that's illegitimate, whether it's Catholic or Orthodox. Both are illegitimate. Trace that priesthood back and it doesn't end up um, uh, with the tribe of Aaron. It doesn't end up uh, with the Levites. Say, so what, what happened? Some hocus pocus started over there in Rome and they created their own priesthood. And that's not a priesthood. They say, oh, Peter was our first pope and first priest. You won't get that from the Bible. You say, why? Peter was married. We've talked about that before. And you can go down that, you can go down that list. It doesn't, it doesn't work. Uh, Peter wasn't of the, the tribe of Levi. He wasn't called a priest. He was an apostle. And, and so this idea that there's a priesthood there and you need to go to Holy Father and, and they steal the name of God and, and you get in a little box and they slide a little thing back and forth there. and con uh, Good day, my son, my daughter. Confess your sins, confess. And the Bible says, who can forgive sins but God only? They can say tic-tac-toe, three in a row and flip this and do this and they can forgive. It won't help you. Your soul will go to straight to hell, trusting in a man, trusting in a priest. That's illegitimate. And you say, what is that? That's dung, piled upon dung, piled upon dung. And you, and you want to get a better resurrection? You want to win some prizes and crowns at the judgment seat? And for eternity, you better... The Apostle Paul said, this is the way you do it. He said, I counted all things but lost. And he said, dung. That's what he counted religion as. And the second thing, if you're gonna if you're gonna to count things necessary, this better resurrection, you must win Christ in the following manner: by getting to know Him personally. Look at Philippians three ten. Philippians three ten. Almost finished. We won't go too much further. I've went a few minutes over here, but Philippians three ten. Look at what it says: that I may know Him. You need to get to know Him personally. You don't, need to get, you don't need to get to know Him like such and such a preacher knows Him or the pastor knows Him or your wife or your brother, your sister. No, you need to get to know Him personally. You need to get to know the Lord. Amen? Get to know Him personally. And that's what the Apostle Paul did. You need to also claim the power that raised Him from the dead. Look at uh, chapter, uh, chapter 3 and verse 10. That I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. You say, what is that connected to? I took you there. Romans chapter 6. Reckoning the old man dead indeed unto sin and alive unto God, serving your, in, your members as instruments of righteousness unto holiness. And that's what will get you uh, the power that raised him from the dead. Many of you don't have the power of God because you're not attempting to reckon the old man dead indeed unto sin every single day. Amen? And you don't know the power of God. You don't know the power of having a strong witness. You don't know the power of having prayers answered. You say, why? You're living your life in service to a dead man and the old man. You, 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 your motive behind when you go to speak, you don't consult the new man and see what the Holy Spirit says. You can set, consult the old man and the old man says, oh, they cursed you on the street, you curse them back. You know what the Bible said? Jesus said, being reviled, he reviled not again. And the Bible says in Romans chapter 12, Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen? That's the Spirit of God. Jesus Christ was there, and the Bible says, When people spoke against Him and they railed on Him, He opened not His mouth. Didn't defend Himself. But He committed Himself, the Bible says, unto a faithful Creator. Amen? People talking bad about you, running you down, and spreading gossip and lies. You know what we tell our Sunday school kids over in America? Zip it, lock it, and put it in your pocket. So help you some real deep doctrine right there, amen? All right, we'll stop right there for tonight. We've gone over too, further, too much in time. All right, we'll stop right there.